Alright, Brian, so it's our care. And I'm the host of Talking with Fancy Ball. If you don't believe me, there's something wrong with you. Something terribly, terribly wrong with you. If you do believe me, everything is right with you. How to be happy? How do you be happy? It's a question I was thinking about earlier because I was struck by the fact that today, and I guess yesterday as well, I got a lot of things done, some of which make me I liked the making that video about INFJs and Rachel more specifically with Rachel the other day. And I like the fact that it's done very well in the likes department. So like 30% likes, which is crazy high, at least in the first hundred. Now, obviously that'll go down over time, but it makes me super happy for Rachel to see that, uh, her presence and her participation in that video and our making of it uh, was so well received. I still have my couple of haters, of course, who thumbs down everything before I even have a chance to post it if it's scheduled, for example. But well, that's not entirely unexpected, and frankly, it's probably something I have to have expected. Though I didn't, but it's just lack of expecting on my end. <laughs> so, on the question of happiness, then, I think the number one consideration is in circumstance. And what I mean by circumstance is, from my perspective, circumstance is maximally attained when I'm surrounded by positive people who like me and, you know, respect me and stuff. Uh, Rachel's been a substantial addition to my life in that regard, whereas my life is less happy and more negatively impacted when I'm troubled about relationship stuff. Now, in relationship stuff, I typically can solve one way or the other. Relationship stuff's a little trickier. Now it's time for me to pull this bomber. Well, let me talk about a couple of things. Specifically, recently it made me happy. Rather than general circumstances. General circumstances are important. I think it's, you'll sort of be surprised to notice happiness occurring when your general circumstances are structured properly for your own nature, ways, abilities, strengths, weaknesses, etc. But beyond that, for me specifically, and I assume for everybody specifically also, there are very specific things that make me happy. Like today, one of the things that made me very happy was well, originally I went to go visit Corey. We stopped by Corey's house. I chatted with him a little bit. Introduced him to Rachel. Now, he's playing strict social distancing. So he wouldn't, he sort of stood out of the front step of his house and I stood about 10 feet to 15 feet away or something. And we chatted like that. But uh, he texted me. I, you know, we exchanged numbers. I indicated that I want to spend more time with him. And I think you could tell by just my approach which wasn't pre, pre thought out at all, but just naturally how it went that, and in fact, he said, it seems like something you've been thinking about for a while. I said, yeah, totally. I've been talking with Rachel about it too, which is, I'm troubled by the absence of that relationship in my life. So that made me very happy to go interact with him um, and for reconnect in some sense. Another thing that made me very happy today was, of course, hi, Winston's mom. You called me today, but I'm sorry I didn't see that phone call until uh, some six hours later. At which point I figured whatever it was probably wasn't relevant anymore. Um, so, anywho, that's one thing that made me very happy. I got to do that. And also, Rachel and I drove down to Costa Mesa for to uh, well, I, I guess it's my favorite LA area. We start in Orange County, actually, but 
we got a shit ton of different varieties of weed, lots of different prices, um, all of it high quality. And it's called the it's called Peoples. Uh, anyway, we were driving down there, and it's nice, nice driving around and doing shit in LA right now because there's no traffic. It's shocking. Anyhow, that made me happy going down there and getting weed with Rachel because wait, Rachel likes going and checking out the new stores. She always tells me how much she likes going and doing things with me. It's SE fourth fourth slot relief function. Um, right, yeah, I know. This is wrong. Relevance is always uh, jumping ahead of data. Now well, let me pull this one. Okay, so Bank and I will address that in a second. The question about deliberation and interface vectors. But before I do that, I want to say another thing that made me happy today was the uh, was the, the fact that I we briefly Rachel and I were listening to watching Frank James's live stream, and when we started talking. About I was just cleaning up, really listening to it, not really participating much. But the third time we get a dog, I put a <coughs> in the chat. I put uh, emoji like of a devil's head or something colorful, you know. And I said you should name your dog host Eric. And then another emoji. I figured with the emo combination of emoji and text, you're going to get more likely to be noticed. Anyway, he did notice it out of 539 people participating there. That chat goes by fast, you know. He did notice it and said, oh, how can famous people see here? And, you know, said, yeah, that's a good idea. And then the dark host there or something. You know, not said he was going to, but like, just, yeah, that's a good idea or whatever. Um, that made me happy because, of course, it made me feel special, you know. It's not necessarily easy to get your chat read by Frank James because he's got so many people in the chat. And uh, made me feel special. I like that. So now let me address your question. All right. So the introverted functions are your, you could call them the illocutionary functions. They're the aspects of yourself that you, it's behind the curtain. Um, where you keep your clutter. It's not for presentation, right? And so uh, it's FI and SI and TI and NI are all specific to the internal fields. Now, technically, FI and SI are more the native to the physical internal fields. And NI and TI are native to the internal metaphysical field. But the way they work is like this. TI takes words that are either generated by any within, their, within your own head or heard from outside. And then it judges it against the universal logic. Now, this occurs inside of you, so it's in your privacy area, right? It's like, I don't have to say out loud what I'm thinking. But um, it interacts with the fields in the sense that it gets data. You, you hear data from the external metaphysical field, for example, and then TI parses it and possibly asks questions. When I'm in question-asking mode, I'm using TI more than I am in any other mode. 
Um, so, but when I'm using, when I'm asking questions with CI, I'm extroverting the question, but inside of my head, I've got multiple possible answers and what I'm going to do with each of those answers, depending on if he gives those answers, right? So, uh, the, the fact is, TI is interacting with the metaphysical field by coordinating with extroverted intuition, basically, uh, for most people, anyway. FE is a metaphysical function, basically, and it says, okay, I, it frames my knowledge function. So, um, if I'm if I if I'm a knowledge interfacer, if I'm if I'm a knower interfacer or an interfacer knower, well, let's say I'm a knower interfacer, then my knowledge is going to inform or frame my um, interface. But let's say I'm an interfacer, I'm still going to be framed by my knowledge, not the other way around, because interface relies on knowing rather than deliberating. So if you are interacting with somebody via this methodology here, then you are probably not a knower. When I make that video on cognitive functions that I uploaded and published today, scheduled for today, I got one scheduled for tomorrow, and I got a third one up, I got to just schedule for the next day. Um, that's deliberation action. Because I think it all out ahead of time, or write it all out. Writing, writing is a perfect way to, to keep your TI organized. Uh, and then I deliver it. I assume I've anticipated all the necessary defensibility angles because I, it's not going to lose the argument because I, I know what people might say about it or blah, 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 something like that. Um, where am I going with this? The, if if I were an interfacer slash knower instead. Frank James interfacing with the live stream, he is spending a lot less time on his own answers and a lot more time going through the various people's comments, responding to them, and where I guess, uh, well, just that, basically. Sometimes talking a little bit about his life, but I spent a lot of time here on this answer, right, for the question, um, how to interface and in so does extroverted sensing. And so does extrovert thinking. They get data from both. Uh, just as the introverted functions get data from the external fields, but don't necessarily share all their data with the external fields, so too do the extroverted functions only get some of the data from the external fields. And the data that they get is dependent on the kind of function that it is. Now, the difference between an interface function and an action function is that an interface function expects to be responsive to the data it's getting in real time, whereas the um, action function expects to be able to decide the matter by acting. Um, so if I'm going to have a conversation with you about um, why is this thing on my bill and I don't remember ordering that or something like that, right? There's no, there's no way I can decide the matter decisively ahead of time. Uh, I have to have the conversation. There are probably factors I don't know yet. I have to consider the nature of the person I'm dealing with and also the nature of the protocol I'm dealing with. Those are TE and FE systems things. Whereas when I'm presenting an argument uh, in a YouTube video, it's a different matter. I'm saying, here's my explanation of our cognitive functions, and here's how we should talk about it and think about it, and here's why. Well, I've done most of that TI stuff already in my head or in previous videos or whatever, and so uh, I'm fairly confident about the the model I'm presenting. And, uh, and the reason I, I can be confident about presenting a model like that is because I have TI tool and FE third. Now, if an FE person is going to present shit like that, they're very careful. Look at Sam Harris being a philosopher, lecturer, intellectual. Uh, he's very deliberate and cautious in what he says and how he says it. Because he's an INFJ. 
And it's, it's not really his field per se, exactly. They, I mean, INFJs are versatile. They can do a lot of different things, but it's not their most native field in the way that it is for TI users because ultimately philosophy and, and its ilk rely on conditional logic to attain any legitimacy. Otherwise, it's just um, Deepak Chopra. So this is a roundabout way of getting to this, which is TE is an interface function that expects the fluid systems of the world, that is the physical systems of the world, be it how a vacuum cleaner works or uh, how an organization is navigated, not factoring in the individual people, um, that's a fluid system that you know you're not going to be able to decide how to fix the vacuum cleaner before you look at it. I can decide how I'm going to answer all of your objections to my arguments before I hear any of them. No problem. I can't meaningfully decide how I'm going to solve, say, this problem of um, needing to access some group resources but having my membership of it expired. Uh, I'm not going to be able to address that problem um, without talking to somebody or engaging some protocol. So I can't TI my way through it ahead of time. It's possibly not even a TI-related matter. For example, <clears throat> Let's say I want to pick up on a girl and have her to uh, want to go out on a date with me or something. Well, I'm not going to, in most cases, successfully attain that outcome by explaining to her either that it's in her, uh, I guess you'd say, efficiency, effectiveness, best interest kind of a thing. In other words, it's prescriptively good for her to go out with me. That's not going to convince her. It's not going to convince her that it's logically consistent that she ought to go out with me given her previously expressed taste in men or something. That's not going to convince her to go out with me. It's not going to convince her to go out with me to say, um, well, here's, I mean, this might. Now, now, now let's get into the intuition strategies, right? It might convince a girl, depending on the girl, to say, well, here's 10 different reasons why you should go out with me. That would be extroverted intuition. Oh, I don't pick up on any girls. I just I make these hypothetical examples all the time. Obviously, I am in a relationship, would never even dream of even looking accidentally at another girl, let alone considering getting on them in any way, shape, or form ever. I am the most devoted and loyal mate you'll ever encounter. So, uh, yeah, I am... I am... Chinese twin married to Rachel. Okay, well, remember, SE is an action function, so it deals in impacts. Extroverted intuition also deals in impacts because it's an action function. It's just that it's a different kind of impact and on a different level of being uh you know with ti and fi they're neither both of them deal with the same thing that is to say legitimacy good and bad normative or or value claims like this is legitimate this is illegitimate i don't i like this i don't like this this is good this is bad those kind of uh calculations are a different sort of being than causing impacts Making calculations is different than causing impacts. Action functions cause impacts. Deliberation functions make calculations. Knowledge functions um, well they, one way to say it is they deal with that that Needs no calculation or has already been calculated. They they retain and retrieve, or you know, they retain and attend to um, 
things that don't need information that doesn't need any further calculation or no doesn't need calculation at all. But does TI and FI get applied to fields only through other functions? Well, no. So on the internal metaphysical field, is it? <laughs> if I'm just trying to go, okay, so if this is me, then there's just going to do that. If I'm trying to do the permutations of agent, subject, object in my head, I stuff, right? Doesn't come as easy to me as it does to an INFP, but it comes, so it's it's laborious for me to really get deep into heavy TI shit. I'm pretty sure it's YouTube in general, not me. Uh, or, you know, it's, so it's not correct to say that you use a function only with another function. TI can be used, I mean, put it this way. If I'm reading, let's say I were reading a straightforward logical argument that said like all A's are B's, only C's have D's. If all A, if all B's are C's, um, is it necessarily the case that some B's have D's? And I would say, well, no, that's a logical argument. Now, in that case, I had to ideate it and remember it concurrently in my head and then use that example and answer it. If I were reading that from text, I'd be using my SE. Thank you. Appreciate that update, Bacon. If I were reading that argument that you've written on there and I'm reading it out loud or reading it with my eyes, then I'd be using SE to gather the data in, obviously. I'm using my senses, okay? And, um, I didn't, don't think I said you were heavy TI. I mean, I may, I, I don't know when I said heavy TI. So, um, <clears throat> let me finish this thought. Uh, obviously, if I read it, I draw in the information with my senses. Does that mean I'm using extroverted sensing? Well, only in the most literal sense. I'm really using extroverted, I, I'm extroverting my attention primarily through extroverted intuition, if it's me. So if I read that question, I start immediately thinking about possible answers. Or if I read that argument, I think about possible ways to address it or explain it or something. Um, but obviously, if I were blind, you know, I have to get the data in some way, either by hearing it, by reading it, by feeling it with Braille. Uh, I don't know, maybe somebody has made a, uh, a language entirely out of taste. <laughs> but um, regardless, I have to get the data in some way. So in that regard, I'm attending by a, some sort of extroverted function in terms of opportunism and or following through on what I'm already doing, then that would be SE. If I'm attending to it in terms of social grace and how people are responding to what I'm saying, that would be FE. If I'm attending to the external data in terms of um, what I'm possibly going to do with it intellectually or ideationally, that would be any. If I'm attending to the external data in terms of how it links to my goal, or problem solving plan here, and that'd be TE. So it the object doesn't change. The in other words, the the being space, the being space time that proceeds in front of you on an ongoing level, ongoing way, at, you know. That's that's not where the TE or the FE or the NE is. <laughs> <laughs> it's how you're attending to it. What what information you're you're drawing from the field, and also uh, how you are framing it. So in this case, I tend to draw information from the field a little bit at a time, and then I NETI. I talk for quite a while about it if it's an interesting point. When I'm too when I when I get too distracted, it's because I'm too extroverted, which means I'm looking at the chat too much. I'm getting distracted by what other people say instead of just looking at myself and talking it out with my TI. If I were talking it the way I could be using the TI independently on something that I sourced someplace else, I could source it from memory. That's an internal metaphysical field. I could source it from my bodily information in the moment. Like, oh, my knee hurts or something right now. That would be a physical internal field. I could source it from the external metaphysical field where words are written or in theory, I could source data that's non-meaning oriented by looking to the external physical field. So even though we talk about functions being native to the fields, we can't make the mistake of conflating the two things. Just because SE is native to the external physical field of the action function, it doesn't mean that 
it shared all the same qualities with or anything in the external field. The external metaphysical field is um, is attended to when one is not attending to words and meanings. Whether or not those words or meanings are in the external physical field or not, you're not attending on that field if you're attending to the to the word. Like right now, I'm not attending to space and space objects. I'm attending to the words that I've seen here and the words I'm saying in my head and et cetera. I don't have enough attention to also be listening to the bees outside. <laughs> so how did TE and FE interact with the fields? Well, they, you know, FE is problem solving on the external metaphysical field. TE is problem solving on the external physical field. More or less. Uh, sometimes, however, if certain protocols are ordinal and um, sort of organizational, then it may be a form of problem solving is required that deals with the protocol organizational mechanics rather than with the individual people. And in that case, it would be more of a TE situation. So um, how it links to you internally is going to depend on where it is in your stack. Is mental math, memory, parsing out things quietly and imagining in the future all examples of attaining to objects on the internal and physical? Well, mental math is doing deliberative function in the on the internal metaphysical. Memory or remembering something, either having an association pop into your head or actively trying to remember something, which are two different as two different kinds of SI sort of. Um is uh is a receive function on the internal metaphysical field. So the mental math, that requires you to execute a calculation of a function, whereas uh, having an associated association memory pop up into your head or some memory pop up into your head is to receive suddenly a piece of information without willfully operating on it at all. Now, you might then operate on it further, but the operation would be to clarify what you already know about it or rather than to figure out something new about it. Like, for example, the other day I had in my head uh, this uh, melody that I knew was from some old song, but I couldn't remember the song. It was... I couldn't remember what the song was. I couldn't remember that much of it at the time either. I remember just a little snippet of it. And I received it in my head. I don't remember what associated or triggered it. But all of a sudden, I had this little melody going in my head. I was like, what the fuck song is that? And I sang it to Rachel. She can remember some of the lyrics. And I Googled the lyrics. And it was, of course, New Order's um, song called... Uh, what is that song called? It's a New Order song. Uh, let me see what it's called. I forget already. So in that is I'm trying to seek out something I think I already know, but I can't remember what it is. So I have to look it up again. Bizarre Love Triangle. That's what it's called. Thank you, Desert Iron TJ. Um, no, Bizarre Love Triangle. So then the thing is, when you're talking about TE, one of the problems I have with TE an example where I messed with the equipment and turned it to burger. Oh, yeah, equipment there, yeah. Um, well, yeah, sure, right. I drew an NI conclusion, or SI maybe, and it, something in there. There's possibly a fuse was blown. I pulled a fuse that looked like it was probably blown, and I said I should get a, should get another fuse for this. And that would be TE at that point. Like, how can I solve this problem? Uh, TE is probably diagnosing the problem as well. And I don't know if my diagnosis is right. I use more like an NI diagnosis than I did any kind of TE. I didn't test to see if it was that. Although I did ultimately pull a fuse out and look at it. Um,
Yeah, they're cheap. Oh, this one. Huh. All right, that's cool. Get to know they're not expensive. Um, so, that's the thing about the, the fields is, you know, different functions can operate in different ways with the fields, uh, but there's no function that's isolated on just one field. So TI operates on data from external fields, and when I speak it out loud, TI is underlying the words I say in the sense that when the words I say are predicated on the notion that things are legitimate or illegitimate based on words and meanings and definitions and things like that and grammar. Um, now, I could tell stories that are not TI based, they're usually more FE based. There's usually going to be humor stories, or I could even tell FI stories, as I do occasionally when something substantial FI. Uh, totally lost my train of thought. What is that sound? Is that my phone? What's my phone doing? That's telling me sleeping time. See? Sleeping, it says. Can't really see it very well, I guess. Sleeping, there. Uh, I don't know what my train of thought was. Oh, yeah, the way that they interact with things on different fields. Obviously, there's another reality that there's a link to, which is FI is something that's primarily drawing things from drawing information from the internal metaphysical field and then realizing the impacts of those informations on the physical field so in other words legitimacy and illegitimacy hurt a lot more when they're calculated with fi whereas they hurt less when they're calculated with ti uh, that's weird, Bacon. But yeah, that's the, the nature of sort of uh, macros that that run underneath. Um, something else that made me happy today. The bees. So I, I last night around midnight. Oh, legitimacy T I F I. Well, what I'm saying is that if I determine that I'm wrong and illogical about something, well, a lot of people that bothers them. But um, if you know, it doesn't bother me that much. And for most T I users, it's well, let's say let's say you determine that something is wrong, okay? I go, no, 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 no. Your argument makes no sense because you made this mistake in logic here. That's not going to make me hurt at all. It might make you feel bad, but it's not going to make me feel bad. Now, let's say I have to go up and say, hey, something's wrong here. You're abusing this person. They're suffering. That's going to be make me feel bad too, not just... I'm trying to stop per this person A from making person B feel bad. I'm person C. I'm going to feel bad. Person B feel going to bad. Going to feel bad. And if I've done my job right, then I'm going to make sure person A feels bad too. So it's a, uh, um, it's real. Whereas TI is practice almost. It was conditional, you know. It's conditionally so. We're just saying for the sake of argumentation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're not actually mad at him, yeah. And that makes a big difference. So when it comes to legitimacy, then, FI has has to... Like, TI has to announce what it would do. But FI has to do it. And as a consequence, things are a lot more high stakes for FI.
And for me, <coughs> if I only very rarely, nobody wouldn't say anything or did anything, I would have fucking ran right over there. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, so, what was I saying? Well, maybe I'll wear a, a name tag that says, I'm host Eric Bacon. So, you can see how FI then is more than just a calculation. FI is the realization of the impacts of the calculation. Now, TI might cause you to realize the impacts of a calculation if the TI matter is determinate. For example, when my kid made a certain bad argument um, in quarterfinals at that most recent tournament, or octaves? Was it octaves or quarters? I think it was quarters. Yeah, it was quarters. And quarters, um, I I was watching, I was just like, hey, it's over. He lost. I knew it right away because I could TI it out and I could see this wasn't going to play out well. Um, although it wasn't really a TI issue. It was more of a TE issue in that instance because he, he split his tactics in two. He wasn't necessarily making any terribly wrong arguments, but he the half of the arguments he was making were kind of no low impact, low low results arguments. So, um, and they were then they were binary. They were low percentage binary arguments. They either were going to win in the whole round or nothing, and but it was nothing. So, uh, it's possible for me to feel bad when I come to a TI conclusion that I don't like, but. It's um, the feeling bad is is going to be because of what that TI conclusion reveals to me, not because of the TI itself. In contrast, FI is the feeling itself. When my dog died, I was very sad. I felt very strong feelings, very bad feelings, and converted them to SI mostly. But uh, it was not a calculation for me at that point. It was experiencing the impacts of of highly of loss, losing something that's highly valued. Um, on the other hand, I know how FI works as a logic, and I do occasionally do FI calculations, just so rarely that I, it's hard for me to note them. So when I think to myself, okay, do I want to text Taylor back to be cool and not leave him hanging, or do I want to Ignore him because if I text him back, he's going to be like, don't be a pussy or whatever. And I, you know, whatever I end up deciding, I'm choosing one thing that matters to me over another thing that also matters to me. And I have to prioritize one over the other. That kind of calculation is the calculative side of FI, the deliberative side of it. But uh, TI, TI means you know what is defensible and not universally. FI means you feel you feel the currency of value directly. It's a little different in terms of its well, like FI prevents you from being too bold, too risky in some sense, but it also can tend to make you fly off the handle. Well, me too, in general. Uh, like, if there's an emergency going on or something, if I was handling shit and shit was going down all around, I think I'd be quite calm in the middle of that, as I have been historically when shit goes down. Um, but when the shit's not flying anymore, that's when... It'll impact me. 
How about one with backstack FI and SI experience pain? I mean, ENTJs probably have the highest pain threshold, followed by uh, ENFJs, or maybe they're the same, which is to say that if you're injured and you're an ENTJ, you might not even notice that you're favoring one leg until someone else points it out or so you notice your opponents are hitting a volleyball towards your weak side all the time. And the, the reason is because, oh, shit, I'm favoring this leg. Oh, shit, my leg hurts. And I, ENTJ I typed one time told me this story about how she had to deduce from her opponent's strategy that she was injured. Emotional pain. Now, note, of course, when you ask the FI and SI with with back front, with back side, FI and SI experience pain, I nevertheless interpreted it as only one kind of pain, the physical kind, because that's what it means to be FI polar. But okay, so um, if you experience pain with back sack FI, if it's polar it, and you have four slot SI, then it converts mostly to SI. So when I'm experiencing emotional pain, I go and try to clean my room, um, make myself cozy on the couch, eat haagen watch TV, take a bath, uh, do my laundry, organize my bills, all that kind of shit. A bunch of SI stuff. Um, when I feel bad emotionally, it tends to express, I tend to express it in terms of feeling bad physically. Like, I don't know, I just feel eh, just not not energetic or something. It'll be, are you sad? Sad. Maybe. Um, and I tend to misinterpret certain kinds of emotions of other people as well, even though you might think of that as an F-E thing. It really isn't. When I see somebody who has a strong F-I look on their face, and I'm asked to identify the emotion of the facial expression. I'm likely to say stubborn or uncooperative or something like that, um, when really the emotion is hurt or or sad or you know, upset or whatever. Um, I noticed this on some when I, the period of time when I was taking like facial expression identification tests, trying to figure out if that was FB. When I realized that it's not, it's not an FE thing to be able to identify facial expressions of me, this or that. It's both FE and FI for different reasons and in different ways. But which am I, Winston's mom? I think I'm, I'm either I'm either quick to anger, quick to forget, or slow to anger, quick to forget. One of those two. What do you think I am? Quick to anger, quick to forget? Okay. See, sometimes I feel like I'm slow to anger, but I guess I'm not really slow to anger even when I think I, I just, it's not being very objective about myself. Quick to anger, quick to forget is a good way to be. That's a good way to be because, first of all, it's important to get angry, angry quickly and um, shock and awe the fuck out of somebody before they have a chance to. Um, you know, decide the thing in one battle. Whatever else you do, decide the thing in one battle as quickly as possible. Don't get in any war of attrition. The ENTPs will lose war of attrition because we'll lose interest. <clears throat> oh, right, right. That's, yeah, that's, that's another question. Uh, am I actually angry? Uh... I mean, I'm displaying anger. I mean, I guess it's instrumental or it's um, 
indulgent and entertainment level one of the two. So it's occasionally I'll be actually really angry about something, but I, I don't, like can't really make me angry. Right? When I try to think of examples of me being really angry, actually angry, I think about Kimberly Greg and just about fucking insane with her her provocations and button pushings and such, you know? One can only be provoked and button pushed so much before one just goes like Arr! I haven't been that angry like that since I left Kimberly. I'm not even close to that angry. When I was with Kimberly, at the, towards the end, I got so angry, I just thought, okay, I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do something dumb here. I'm gonna do something stupid, I'm gonna, you're gonna hit somebody, I'm gonna, you know, I can't, I can't continue to just, Be thwarted in my communicative effort at every turn, which is what happened in our relationship. My efforts to solve problems with words were thwarted at every turn, willfully, consistently, across the board, almost without exception, for years. Accompanying this with a dissembling fog of, of uh, you know, it's a, a enveloping fog of dissembling. So I want to tell you guys about the bees, okay? This is important bee news that I have to share with you. So, okay, in case you haven't heard, some people may have already heard this because I've already talked about it in a previous live stream. Last night, well, yesterday, when I was taking a walk with my dad and Rachel in the evening time before it got dark, there was this, I saw this circle on the street. Like, what is that circle over there? Well, what it was was this dinner plate sized pile of bees. They were just sitting in the street. Um, there, in fact, there was another pile nearby it that had been run over, but this pile hadn't. I think maybe the queen lived the first pile. Of, I don't know what happened, but so I was like, wow, that's weird. We talked about it and concluded that they were looking for a new place to have an offshoot hive. We thought, Rich and I thought for a while that the neighbors had killed the, the hive that lived in their tree. Not the case. I think it just outgrew that hive because. There's still bees going in and out of there, but I think they're having an offshoot hide because they got too many bees in there. So last night around midnight, I went outside to see the bees are still on the street with this here dustpan and this blue Tupperware thing about this big, about this deep, you know. And they were still there in a circle on the street. I scooped them all up with the dustpan. I put them in the um, blue thing because it was cold outside, you know. It got down to the 40s last night, so they didn't really, you can't really fly around when it's that cold. And then I put them in this box back here. Well, there's this long box, it's like it's like uh, like this long, maybe, and I don't know, like this tall or something. And it's you know, low to the ground. And, and my dad has like old paint cans in there. It's basically an empty storage, wood storage box thing. So I put them there and I put a couple of sticks, like crossbars across it, that kind of lean diagonal so they have something to build on. I'm not sure how bees go about building like that. So this morning I, I look at them throughout the day and I was like, yeah, they freaking, they're picking up home there. It looks like, I sure it looks like a lot of these coming and going. Well, my dad then comes and talks to me, and he says, what? He says, well, son, I went out and looked for the bees in the street. They're all gone. But I talked to Kathy. She said the bees were swarming up in her tree earlier, but then they left. And then uh, I talked to Dave across the street, and he said he thought he had a swarm in his backyard, really, but they're not there anymore. Now, what my dad didn't know, I didn't tell him, <laughs> was that I had scooped up the bees and put them in the box in the back. 
Uh, I didn't say I didn't say anything either way about him when he said these things. I didn't correct him. I didn't also I didn't volunteer any information. I didn't lie either. So careful not to. Anyway, he's like, well, I, I checked the garage. We don't see him in there. We drove, they were trying to go in the garage before, and he they were trying to to live inside the garage door opener, which was not a good place. So. Anyway, uh, Shrike didn't say anything. I was like, hopefully Dad doesn't notice the bees back there for a while. Of course, nothing that nothing's case my dad's noticed around here for more than five minutes, it seems like. Within a couple of hours, he came back and said, Sean, come here. And I'm like, yeah, he's like, I found the bees. Look, they came back here, they're in this wooden box. And then he opened it and you know, there's a whole bees around. He didn't, didn't let him worry about it. He opened it, and you can see the bees have made started making a ball around the stick, like they're building a a honeycomb thing or a hive or whatever it is. And he he didn't notice. He probably didn't looked in that box for a long time. He didn't even notice that I had put those sticks in there and that I put the blue Tupperware thing in there. So. He must have just figured those were already there, I guess, and didn't say anything about it. And he said, well, we got bees now, I guess. I guess we got a hive of bees. That's cool. Uh, the, the pear tree will get a lot of bees. I was very surprised that the bees were here. He's going to let us keep the bees. <laughs> so that was good. I was super stoked about that. And not only is he going to let us keep the bees, but he doesn't know that I put them there, and I didn't have to lie about it. <laughs> so that's a win-win-win all the way around. Yeah, my dad actually seemed happy about them. Like... It didn't bother him at all. I think he knows, probably because he knows I'm enthusiastic about the bees and keep talking about them and stuff. He's become interested in the bees. That's my guess. <laughs> what kind of fireworks show? You mean like a big, big burst of activity, or you mean I'm gonna get mad at somebody? No, that's a belt, yeah. I hang the belts on nails on the wall because it's easy to find them then. Choleric is quick to anger, quick to forget. Oh, what's melancholic? Is that slow to anger, slow to forget? <sighs> Nobody knows. I'm gonna open this thing real quick. This is the other thing that kind of made me happy. Is I'm, I'm pretty happy with this little beat here. Right, that's not the one. Is it? I was thinking it was minus one. That's not the one I want. Oh, pajamas. Obviously, pajamas. Not pajamas minus one. Let's see what we're looking at here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Sensual. You have sexual feelings inside of your pencil holder. Good one. I call it winner. Eighties pop or not, I go to wet bed and wake up not caring anymore unless you really upset me, in which case I care a lot. I care a lot too. This sounds like the title screen theme for the TBS TWFP straight to DVD movie. Well, you know it's uh, it's in progress. Okay, in progress. I'm pleased that it made it out of the uh, ideational phase.
Mm, where's the bone? Oh, there's the bone. Where's the? Here's the. Where's the? There's the. Oh, good. Yes, indeed. Quite. Very much. If you want to meet Danny Glover, you got to be full of sin. Uh, it's to get you pumped up for TWFP, the feature film. I like the sound of that, Hambone. I like the sound of that. Auto tuning is. Just for people who don't have very good pitch, mostly. That's mostly why it occurs. I mean, I use pitch shifting a lot, both in composition and in production. Like that baseline there is nothing resembling what I originally played anymore it's been chopped up so many times and moved around and pitch shifted and trying to get to be the right whatever for it <clears throat> but what i really want to do to be perfectly honest right now is musically anyway is to produce a track a cover specifically siddhartha today by corey which is one of my favorite songs, frankly. Not just of his, one of my favorite songs, period. It's great. Um, so the thing is, you know, I've been listening to lots of chords music the last couple of days, uh, playing it for Rachel. I, I take joy in and being with somebody who can appreciate elements of things that are really genius, even though the whole is somewhat marred by imperfections. Like Corey has, first of all, he hasn't made any music in like 15 years. This is all old stuff from the early 2000s. But uh, production is not always it's spotty. Some of it's better than others. Um, arrangement is very spotty. He, he's not really very good at arranging a lot of his songs. Although he, occasionally he's great at it. Um, but uh, despite those those flaws in some of the product that I have to listen to, the, the real genius comes through to my ears, clear as day. And I think, wow. Um, I remember I used to sort of think that he was special. Like, he really is more talented than other people. But, you know, it's like I sort of came to that conclusion. It was almost dispelling this relativist fog that I was in. And even then, I didn't really believe it because it seemed like, well, why would I, you know, everybody thinks they're friend or they themselves. They're really standout outliers, but everybody thinks that. He really is. I mean, I have a lot more faith in my intuition and my vision now, my belief. My, my intuition is the best word for it. My ability to discern the importance and the true from the unimportant and the false. <laughs> so I've had a lot of INFJ time the last couple of days. With Corey, Lightbulb, and Rachel all being in conversations the last few days. I sure do like INFJs. Also, my 
brief interaction with Frank James, another INFJ encounter in the last few days. Uh, I just like the way that they get it when I'm talking to them about, God, this works well, but it's just this one problem here. Yeah, I did. I, we raced last night by Corey's house today. I said hi, and um, it was nice. It was really, it was, it was a a short encounter. Uh, we, we weren't there a very long time, but it was a very productive encounter. I feel like uh, we're on the same page. We both want the the relationship to resume, and we both would like to see each other more active in our respective lives. I would like to just have Corey around more, just see him occasionally. You know, I don't need, I don't need a shit ton of him every day to day, but uh, he's important. And I know he's important to me. He was my best friend for a long time. And um, I spent a lot of time with him. <laughs> and I learned a lot from him. I was reflecting today as well how I wouldn't. I don't, well, I was going to say, I was thinking about this in the car. First, I thought, you know, you wouldn't be anywhere close to as good as you are at anything if it weren't for Corey. You, you learned so much from the first set of myself. Then I said to myself, well, you got to think, if Corey had never been around, you probably would have learned from some various places. Um, but then, realistically, no, I would not have learned as well because very few people of his caliber of genius exist. As far as art intuition, anyway. Um... And interestingly, of course, he didn't need to, he, I don't think he, he would have been the same artist whether I was there or not. So that, should, that tells you something right there. That It's like, he's fundamentally, a different kind of intuitive. He he is the the whole of the thing, without having to learn it. We initially met at a party. Uh, it was like we're eighteen or something. He went to high school with me for a couple of years. He went to continuation school. I never knew him in high school, but I knew him shortly after high school, and I got the. Uh, you know, immediate impression that, oh, this guy is smart. Like, this guy understands things. I mean, you can't go wrong picking the Beatles, you know. The Beatles are definitely next-level all-time geniuses. Well, especially, you know, as, as a genius, as a group. Not so much the solo stuff. I like to tell some stories, too, sometimes. In songs, uh... I feel like I'm not at my ceiling at all. I'm not close to my ceiling. That uh, there are better things in my future. More more realized creations with better NI and more care and more awareness. And hopefully more artistic success, at least. <sighs> Thanks, INTJ. Oh, and INTJ mentions Rush? Mind blown. <laughs> well, we need a more complicated drum beat, okay? The problem with our, our music here is, you know, like regular people could play that, maybe. 
Let me tell me way, way, way too hard and complicated for this song. That's the only way we're going to pull this shit off. Hi, Dave Matthew. This is Neil Pert from Rush. No, they suck ass. They have a couple of, they have one good song. Maybe two. I hate that shit, 20 minute songs. It's horrible. That's an absolute bad dream. I'm going to say that instead of Nightmare. Because Nightmare is so cliche. RHCP suck. The Royal Hawaiian Canadian Police. What's RHCP? I'm not sure I have no attention span. It's because I have high standards. My, my attention is valuable. You better be successful at what you're doing. Look, I'm not saying it's impossible to make a good 20-minute song. But um, you better you better keep it moving, you know. It's like it's easy to understand why it's possible to make a 20 minute long TV show because you, you're you actually telling a story. You've got dialogue, you've got characters, you get stuff like that. Now, you could put that shit into a song, but if the, if the story is the point of the thing, a song is not the best medium to tell a story with. And if the song is the point of the thing, then you need to prioritize the song and. You know, in the ideal organization, you tell the complete story in fewer words and less time. And you, or at least you, you would never allow the identity of the song as a whole to be encumbered with extra duration that it doesn't, it oughtn't have inherently according to what it is as a being. <laughs> so, you know, few songs ever manifest their ultimate perfect form, but occasionally they do. Occasionally songs do. Like, you got to figure that song, Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. It's a pretty perfect song, lyrics and, and, and melody and chords and everything alike. So, what does that tell us? Well, it tells me that time smoke cigarette. AKA Dante Financi Gunny Dog. <coughs> As Winston's mom knows from her time in Korea, Dante Financi Gunny Dog means it's time to smoke a cigarette in Korea. thing is, songwriting is very labor-intensive, especially if you're, you're taking the any approach, the brute force approach, rather than the uh, NI approach. Since I'm not consciously, willfully NI, it's like I imagine myself doing this. Like, I'm going to a warehouse. I'm, I'm with somebody who's, who knows which box item X is in, in this warehouse, full of boxes. But instead of asking this guy, which box is item X in, I go around and go, is item X in this box? No? Okay. Is item X in this box? No. Is item X in this box? No, but that might be item Y, which might be interesting. Let me put that box aside. 
uh, without looking into the boxes per se. So I've trained my NI to work with me like that, super inefficiently, right? But um, but nevertheless, effective if, if I put in the the leg work, you know. Oh, I worked today too. I worked with my clients on grammar. We got mostly through adjective clauses. That was gratifying. I'm really so happy to see Jeffrey just really starting to get it all mastered. Like, we're coming to the end of the book, and as you go through it, you keep repracticing the previous stuff as it occurs. So you're getting better and better and not being fooled by even tricky ones anymore. Uh, you know, like you see, it's one of the early things that people get. Not early, but one thing that people get confused with a lot is prepositional phrase with the two versus infinitive phrase with the two. Doesn't fool cool them ever anymore. He even nailed the, well, he didn't quite nail it. He mostly got right the object complement that was a you know, really tricky object complement. And like, he understood that the, when a relative pronoun was working as the object of a gerund, he got that, which is a very tricky spot. He didn't get the subject of the infinitive, which are fairly, it's not really that rare of a sentence, but to say a sentence in English that has the subject of the infinitive, you have to say something like, I watched the squirrel run up the tree. In that case, the squirrel is a subject of the infinitive and there's an implied infinitive. The two is implied, the squirrel to run up the tree. <coughs> And also of note, or interestingly, um, when you have a pronoun that's the subject of an infinitive clause, such as watch me ride my bike, um, it uses the objective case of the pronoun. It's the only object, is the only subject in English that uses the objective case, namely the subject of an infinitive. So if I say, hey mom, watch me ride my bike, and I'm saying you. Subject, watch, verb, me, direct object, no. You, subject, watch, verb, me to ride my bike, direct object. It's the infinitive phrase, the whole infinitive phrase is the direct object, and me is the subject of it, to, the implied to is, is there implied. So anyway, grammar is fun and interesting. I like it a lot. I like teaching it. I like talking about it. Uh, it's a very TI system, very logical. But I've read more about Esperanto, and that's a much more sensible way to organize the language. They, uh, they've got it designed so you can easily on the fly figure out what word you're trying to say, how to say the word by knowing a few basic rules of how the language works. Like, you know, in English, almost all the, not almost all, but a lot of the adverbs are in an LY. Well, like, Esperanto would have all of the adverbs in the same ending, no matter what. So, and you can make meow into an adverb by just adding that ending. You can make meow into an adverb by just adding that ending. <laughs> Which, of course, makes subject, also, there's an ending for subjects, ending for objects. Um, so, it means subject object order is flexible. You can put them in any order because the subject, where it's working in the sentence as is determined, it's told by the ending of the word. It's a lot of suffixes and, and prefixes. Yeah. That's called Esperanto because that op. Ophthalmologist Zamenhof, he wrote under the pseudonym Dr. Esperanto. And even though he named the language the international language, which is quite a, <laughs> a presumptuous name, I think you might say, um, nobody called it that. Everybody called it Esperanto.
I guess it must be easy to learn or else you wouldn't have caught on at all. No, I haven't heard from Jeebus. I don't know what's going on with Jeebus. You're so concerned about people. That's so nice of you. That's an FI. I very rarely... The only person I noticed the absence of, frankly, was his mom and you. And that's because you're always around her, you know? I don't know, maybe you could be special, too. I don't know. I'm going to play a couple songs in, in the live stream and uh, I'm try to do something else or I, I would like to uh, finish my TESE work on mm. the third video that I uploaded that I need to do the title and stuff for. And then after that, I'm going to try to go to bed. I'm tired. Yeah, music time indeed. Okay, I'm going to play a song now. Um, let's see. Where am I going to play? I'm thinking now with my brain. What will I play? Whatever song shall I play? There was something I was thinking I wanted to play earlier. Oh, I wanted to see about that. I don't know if that's really playing or not, but let me see. Here we go. Somebody who can do the job for free When you need a bit of loving Cause your man is out of town That's the time you get me running And you know I'll be around I'm a fool to do your dirty work Oh yeah I don't want to do your dirty work no more. I'm a fool to your dirty work. 
Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Light the candle, put the lock upon the door. You have sent the maid home early, like a thousand times before. Like the castle in its corner, in a medieval game. I foresee terrible trouble, and I stay here just the same. I'm a fool to do your dirty work, oh yeah. I don't wanna do your dirty work no more. I'm a fool to do your dirty work, oh yeah. Mine it, mine it. A good one. Yeah, it's a good song. It's by Steely Dan. It's a really good one. Sunset to the sea. Turn that jungle music down. Just until we're out of town. This is no one night stand. It's a real occasion. Close your eyes and you'll be there. It's everything they say. Perfect day, just in lights from across the bay. That sounds impossible to play. Too jazzerific. Um, I think what I will play instead of that is a couple of my songs, I suppose. Um, what do I feel like playing? Well, yeah, I, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn how to play this one. If I'm learning it still, I can't really play it, but I will get that down. I'm practicing that. I'm not going to practice it right now because it'll be boring to see. So I, the other one I'm practicing is...
I'm gonna produce that song. She knows this today. I'm gonna do it because it's such a good song. Every day I play it for I play it to you think it's a good song, it says it's a good song. So I agree, it is a good song. I think what I'll play right now is just this. I don't know. I'm feeling tired tonight. Not exactly sleepy, but I'm feeling out of fight and reduced in total light of energy. Although I must also say that on occasions like today, I sometimes feel a certain kind of energy. It's the truth that when I've been up a long time I kind of pull down the barriers inside of my mind I kind of see things in a different light but Thanks, guys. Thanks for your kind words of encouragement. I appreciate that. So much more than words of discouragement. Angry words of discouragement. Uh, so I, uh, I listed some angry words of discouragement today. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, it really, really made me feel bad about myself. 
great. That is wonderful, wonderful news. I'm so happy to hear that. Why are you reacting like this to my sad story? Because it's great. Oh, let's see. I see. Oh, he came here with her. And what's the big problem that you can't endure? It seems so sure it's not appropriate claiming to bend things on Scott. Despite getting got, he got you. We're training for him. Training for him. Go to the gym to think yourself good enough again. It seems so sure it's not appropriate claiming to win things on Scott. Despite getting got, he got you. We're framing for him, straining for him. Go to the gym to make yourself good enough again. Well, the thing is, of course, I need to practice that song a little bit more. I just started playing it a couple days ago. I did not really know how to play it before then. It'll get better over time. Like a fine wine in your mom's face. Let me play now. Share a shame. Another song in D minor. Uh, I like this song. I try to play it slow. I try to play it with my emotions. Um, both of them, or all three of them. I'm skating. Okay. <laughs> Good come from skating on the thing when you mistake it for the one. I bet you waited deep in town in DC, so I can take the bench you want to search your time. Driving in the car last night. We had a massive fight. He's insisting we were right, and the other one was blind. So when we both got stunned, I screamed something awfully blunt. My words as wrong as they were dumb. I burned my shame of shame. Of our own failings, not us doing the nailing to the wall. Fear so the other singing off to we'll set their life and all. You can trust me, I can trust you though. Not to trust yourself, much true. Love God to keep you and me. At least about that, we can both agree. Try 
driving in the car last night. We had a massive fight. He insisted we were right and the other won the blame. So when the fuck that's done, I screamed something off the bunk. My word is wrong. You say we're dumb. I burned my share of shame. My share of shame. Well, that wasn't too bad. Mm, let's see. Hmm. Play Amelia. Amelia, right? Stop ameliorating things. Amelia. Go from that place. Take unto you the details of your case. Amelia, when you rise above, floating ahead and soaring like a dove. What will they say when they look at you then? Moving sideways in the space you're in. Wearing side long with the thirsty grin. Amelia, can't you see? You and I will never be. Amelia, yet you're still free. Too much opportunity, you leave out in the rain. Amelia. Amelia, we're watching you. Well, for sure, no matter what we do. Amelia, when you rise up above, turning a head and something I got done. What will they say when they look at you and move inside me? I thought I heard you knock. Oh. Maybe not. I didn't know. I'm playing a couple of songs right now. Just because I feel like playing some songs. That's great. The matter with you. Where's that? I'm here. Cool. What's the matter with Chad? Is he terribly bad? Is he very like Dan? Is a terrible man? Sort of like Jill, who can't pay your bill. Or rather like Jack, who stuck on the facts. What's his shoe? What does she know what to do? If they bring out a team, will she show ingenuity? She talks about you whenever we go walking. What's the matter with Brendan? Is she living in sin? Is she hanging with Jim? Looking terribly sin. What's the deal with Fred? Do 
me push for my tank. Keep colluding with you. And they're talking to Lou. What's wrong with the ladies? What's the matter with men? Well, the feelings of candy. To the coldness of sin. They talk about you. Whenever we go walking. Paths that lead to lesser days. Still, still up over water past, and you ever left that stand. Okay, just tie the sail to the map. Are you angry at Ken or at Neville again? Don't bother with Kev, he's practically dead. Just focus on her medium art. What's the quantity for this? She fell a quiz. What's the matter with Drew? Will she know what to do? If they bring attitude, will she show ingenuity? She talks about you whenever we go walking. Paths that lead to lesser days. Just the up over water path. And whoever's left but still okay. Just tie the sails to the man. Cause each of us have much in gravely sinned. Throw up the hands, stiffen the chin. Catastrophe looms heavy overhead again. Time's down, will never be again, 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 again. Again. Just down for a second. Thank you, Rachel, darling. Thank you for your applause. <laughs> when I was younger, it seemed that everything gleamed. I don't know what happened to me, but I've lost that sense of urgency, and I don't think that I'll ever see it again. If you follow my lead, you'll discover I'm lost in you. And you'll want to know the way to get back out to wherever it was you thought you knew. And tomorrow will be just like today. I'll be lost in two. It's a matter of mood, and much as a matter of will. And the things I do, and the direction I point to, still seem a part of me. Departed. I wonder if I'll ever see them again. But in time, but in Okay. Um, I'm tired of playing the guitar now. I've been playing the guitar a lot today and yesterday. Uh, feel a little frustrated sometimes by things that are inadequately genius, I guess you would say. The inadequacy of inadequate genius. I am hungry, I'm just pumped. Um. You feel I it? totally know what you're saying. Yeah, I know. It's like this it, is the thing. The more clearly you know, uh, the more difficult it is to be satisfied because 
the real standard is very, 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 very high. Mm -hmm. Not fair. The interesting thing is you almost need a lack of NI to get good. Because I had to believe falsely that I was good way before I was. And even now, I'm still discovering, like, actually, Eric, you know, you really kind of suck ass. It's like you never really nail anything. And you kind of fuck around with shit a bunch. And you're starting to too much in them. And, you know, it's like, that's just, and that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. It's, it's not a good time. What was inadequate? Uh, Every one of my songs, I should play it exactly the same way every time. I should strum it the same way every time. Mm. I should play it. I'm not. I should play the same speed every time. I should have a specific way that I play it, and most of them have something like that. It's not quite how I should play it, but it's by and large how I normally play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it it, it does that the thing with since mom. It absolutely did not work for the Grateful Dead. The Grateful Dead are terrible. It worked not at all for them artistically. It may have worked for them financially in terms of like being a drug band or whatever, but um, it did not work for them artistically because, of course, they're terrible. They're again bad too. It's all extroverted intuition, no introverted intuition, mm -hmm. and as a consequence, Best description for it, best word to describe the Grateful Dead, is terrible. You want to go outside, Katie, or what? I mean, the thing is, I want to stress, I greatly appreciate any lovers who like a fair amount of any in this shit. Because, obviously, you got like a fair amount of any and your shit to enjoy any media of mine that's talking anyway. My music, I try to keep it very NI as much as I can. At least I try to make my songs short, right? I got short songs. I, know, I got no solos, no guitar solos or whatever. I hate that shit. Talk about sacrificing the music for your particular experience. That's all that is. Like, if you're a musician who's like to jam out and do jam band stuff as a performance, you're saying, I'm going to sacrifice the quality of the art I'm doing in favor of my own personal experience of it, of playing. Are you going back to the cabin, baby? Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. How many poops could I fit in my pants if my pantaloons could fit poops? I said, how many poops could I fit in my pants if my pantaloons could fit poops? Four poops. How many poops could I fit in my pants if my pantaloons could fit poops?
Trippy tripper, sing Oh, so my dad's been talking to me periodically about wanting me to put together a slideshow or something of the Hawaii trip pictures. Um, of course, I want to make a video about the Hawaii trip. So I interviewed Rachel today about the trip, and we had a conversation about it. And uh, I'm going to use that as sort of the base for making the movie. Moshi Moshi. Moshi Moshi to you as well. I ain't gonna hear. Your dad said he thought the Grateful Dead were terrible until he listened to them on acid when he realized that he knew for sure they were terrible. You'll never have seen him. Let's pause for a minute and settle our minds. Hmm. Life is full of action, full of things that happen. Well, it's a little, YouTube's going through various things right now, but I'll tell you this. Uh, I feel as though I'm growing on this channel, at least, and I didn't on the other channel, so... Uh, I'm going to continue to operate from this channel. I'm going to start to TE it some more. I'm going to um, set up the front page of the channel to feature just the uploads and not so many of the live streams. And uh, uh, have kind of a sense. I don't know. I'll do TE shit, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I want to make a couple of debate videos that I'm going to upload to Rhetorical Slope. Um, I need a good night's sleep tonight, or I need a good six, seven hours. Then tomorrow, maybe I can hammer out a few different things. I want to also, before I go to bed, do the, uh, do the stuff on, I don't have to do that tonight. I can do that for regular tomorrow. So it's not due to publish until, I don't need to have a publish until Monday. My kitty friend, you're so wonderful and good and true and just and fine and special. I've heard the good news. You have a very strange looking leg because it looks extra skinny because they shaved all the hair off of it. Um, did I call to talk to you? I didn't call to talk to you. Um... I don't know what you, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I do know. Bacon, I appreciate you mentioning that. That's something I've thought about on a number of occasions since. Um, I, I don't remember what the exact, the exact exchange was, but the indication was 
he used to sing my songs were all jokes, or I was just a, like some sort of comedy, comedy music person, which is not the case, but which uh, you know, I guess, I guess I thought at some point after musing about his son that there's, there's a decent chance he's only heard one or two things and generalized of who I am based on that one or two things that he's heard. Uh, <coughs> it also means hello in Japanese, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I, I found that, obviously, I found it surprising, frankly, like, Well, at the time, I guess I, I thought, why would anybody think that? But afterwards, I guess I reflected that he probably hadn't, didn't, didn't, wasn't working with a lot of data. So, I don't know. I mean, what I ultimately just really need to do is have a, a really great set of songs that's like play pretty much perfectly. Go to a couple of get a couple of local gigs, play places where I get a little bit of visibility from people. Maybe try to play a couple songs at a, at a uh, the voice open mic. Who lost data? Did I see someone lost data? Yeah. Um, I mean, the thing is, I did that uh, not that long ago on Talking With Famous People. And I've done edited videos like that before. Maybe I'm doing it wrong because instead of, like, I think, I think to do it right, what I have to do is chop out one chunk that's like six minutes long and that covers one topic or something. But I tend to want to make, when I'm doing editing, like, if I want to do it what I consider the best way possible, I'll edit it like this one. Um, like, this is an edited one from recently that I edited out of live streams. But the thing to note is, even though this took a shit ton of effort to make, these are low on it. Hi, Ken Ken Christmas Summer for you. Uh, and the thing is, I, I, I do have a lot of faith in my ability to wow a brand new audience in, with a short set. Like, you know, if I play a 20 minute set or something, hi, KKSP, uh, then. I know that I can bring enough variance in terms of the kind of mood song I'm playing and vary the tempos, um, vary the sort of genre, I guess, of song somewhat within that 20 minutes. That by the end of that 20 minutes, I can I can wow a live audience, no problem. I can be very engaging and Afterwards, they go like, wow, yeah, that was you're really, wow. You know, so I have more faith in my ability to do that than any other modality of music interaction with people, I guess, because, uh, well, I have I have certain FE skills, I guess, and they're maximally attained in front of a group. Oh, you're going to marry Ken Ken Christmas Tarn for you in here? That's cool. Congratulations. What do you want for a wedding present? A goat? A goat or a pony? Those are the only two wedding presents I give. Goats and ponies.
Too many goats and ponies can can Christian summer for you. That'll cause you to go into the SE groups. McDonald's is closed. I just went to McDonald's and I sure. Din din. Boy, I'm something tired. I'm not sure. Uh I guess a little bit devoid of enthusiasm at the moment. I think I've been a very happy day. Very good few days. I've been very happy lately. Things seems fun. Things seems fun. Things seem fun. Uh, good things seem to happen. I have bees now. That's nice. Uh, but I'm subject to being tired and SI considerations regardless. When the SI takes over, you're just, you know, shit out of luck. When the SI gives up. Out of luck, out of ways to be. When the SI gives up, you're out of luck. It's not a way to see LA. Na 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 na, na 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 na, na 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 na. na. Now we're gonna really sing a song. Ready? Here we go. Thank you, Creek. No, Sarva Pugu. Popular with all of the dudes. They all want to get in an Indian marriage. Thank you, Creek. No, Sarva Pugu. What you thinking about what to do? Oh, wait, baby, just for people for you. And I don't think that you want that anyway. Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons is a game for nerds. Dungeons and Dragons is a game for nerds. 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 Well, that's G minor. Okay, fine. Dungeons and Dragons is a game for nerds. Nobody who is cool ever plays that at all. Dungeons and Dragons is totally for nerds. If you think it is not your birds who flew away with these wisdom Well, Octavio Silva, I guess I'd agree that I am a nerd Dungeons and Dragons for me If you think I am not Then you've got some new things to see See It's a game for nerds That much is true But the games that aren't for nerds Always remind me a fool. Oh, yes, I will be 
your dungeon master. Rather that than watch car racing, for sure. What could be taller than driving for dollars and circling round and round and Oh, my hand hurts. Stop hurting my hand, you guys. Stop hurting it. You're stabbing it with your stabs. Don't stab me with your stabs. Don't stab me with your stabs. Don't stab me with your stab me with your stabs. Nicholas Watson stabs me with his stabs. He gets a bunch of stabs out from his bag of scabs. He gives some stabs to hang in tears. He stabs me with them until I fear. He's stabby ways, stabbing me all the time. And Octavio Silva also loves to stab. Octavio Silva stabs me when he's mad. He likes to say, Eric, you deserve that stab. And I'll stab you some more if you complain. Yes, I've got some very callous fingers. But my muscles have limited the lingers. They get tired. They get sore. And if I insist, they'll continue to go to war. And ah, nah, nah. NGP. Nicholas Watson is an INTP. You can tell cause how he doesn't see what he's wearing or what his desk looks like at all. Nicholas Watson is an INTP. Never wants to go out in SE. You can tell that he thinks like me indeed. FO3, FO4, 30F, F you more, F you win, you call me up, F my friend in the butt, F in hard, F in lead, F in win, you make some seed, then you're F your way to heaven for sure. I'm an ISFP. I don't like Fallout and Skyrim and G. They're boring and also ugly. Aesthetics. Yeah, he likes Zelda. Final Fantasy 2. RPG or now he forums in his rear facing seat. He is son to Paul, drives a Yaris to the mall, and discovers nighttime talking. Has a wizard, also a cleric. Plays a half fork when he's feeling merry. Thinks he wants to be a saint when he grows up. And I do produce the best conversations, such as, Hey, look how dark it is outside. I wonder why that is. Oh, I think it's because the sun went down. 
It's nighttime, you see. Nighttime, you say. Yes, a time of no light, a time of the great darkness. All right, you're back, Skyrib. Listen, hey, Skygear, I mean, Skyrib, Skygear, Eternal Sky, Newbie Gear, Geary Noob, Noob Gear Tur. Listen, I'm going to help you with your essay, okay? What's it about? What's your essay about? Well, hey, rib, ribbed, be, be ribbed one, the be ribbed one. Tell me, um, what is your essay about? I hope it's about Shakespeare. You wrote it already? What's it about? I said, not what's it going to be about? Gah. I'll tell you what game I like. A little game I call Talking with Famous People. It's the most exciting game in history. I talk, you talk, we're famous, we're people. It's just like, wow! My mind is blown again. Why does it keep getting blown? I have to reset it every time it blows. Who's it blowing, first of all? What comes easy doesn't last long. What comes hard lasts long. I hope you negated. Not true of penises. That's what I would put. <laughs> well, you clearly ain't talking about peen. Would have been the first sentence in my essay. Oh, Wilbur, you're so comical in your writings, the teacher would say. I'd say, I am a tad glib on occasion. Going for a weeb. What's going for a weeb? Death Stranding in Detroit become human? Well, I guess it's sort of true of penises. I mis misread it. If it said what comes soft, then it would be incorrect. Oh, Shays. In the Ruto entry level. I don't think I could really enjoy playing video games anymore. I could probably still enjoy playing football. But other than that, I don't really think I can make the leap anymore. I don't know. I used to. Uh, some of my favorite video games were games from my childhood, like the Ultima series. So there was Ultima 1 on the Apple II. Uh... Bard's Tale, Daggerfall, um, Sid Meier's Civilization. I like that a lot. Sim City 2000 was maybe my favorite game of all time, though.
<laughs> so it is it is kind of a waste of time to play video games. The, the thing is, it doesn't really teach you any useful skills. Unlike other things you could spend your time getting good at, you don't walk away from it with anything particularly useful unless you're in that industry. You know? Everybody, we're going to jazz aside. We're going to move our own. We're going to jazz aside. Let's and ride. Jazz and jazz and jazz aside. Let's and ride. Let's and ride. Move your arms. Move your thighs. Because it's time to jazz and jazz and jazz aside. I hope you're all jazz exercising. Making bread, so get some dough and knead that dough in your hands. Now roll it out until it's flat. Go ahead and make our plan. We're making bread, get some dough, pound it down, let it rise. Be careful now not to get any flowers splashed up into your eyes. We're making bread. Get some dough, smash it down, let it rise up, make a scene, but don't forget to put all of your bread dough inside of the cup, bread in the oven, smells so good, like a coven, a rose petal bee, written in sand, sitting there smelling like a wonderful man, making bread. Get some dough, pound it down, flatten it, and roll it out. So, roll it up again and put it in the hot place. It'll cook up just like a hot place. We got to bake some bread every day until we're dead at 83. Whichever comes first, we're making bread. And if you don't make it, then you will be dead. Add to the yeast. Do not add salt until the yeast begins to proof. Proof the yeast begins to proof. Oh yeah. We're gonna bake some bread, guys. We're gonna mix the flour in with the water. Put in some yeast. Call over your daughter to mix it up. Put in the soda, the baking kind, not the kind you drink at the quota at McDonald's. Hmm? I don't watch them. I'm not interested in that. I find like happy contrivance like that for its own sake without interest. You have to be totally non reflective to like that shit, frankly. 
I like empty reaction shit, but it's got to be super authentic. It can't be purposed for that. It's got to be a naturally current phenomenon. Or else I'm just not buying it. I think you know what I'm saying. It's a life we live. Let's full of triumph and despair. And you know as well as I that we can't go out in our underwear. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think it's pretty epic, huh? pretty anthemic, you might say. No, 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 it's not anemic. It's different. I don't have sickle cell anemia. It let, let it rise. It rises. It rises. It's ready to be needed. We need to need the bread and feed it. The bread. The bread. It's ready and proof. 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 proof, proof the bread is proof. I recommend everybody have weird power fantasies. Get down up on top of your hands and then get down up from on top of your knees. The proof is in the pudding. Let's have chocolate. Let's have some pudding while the bread rises off it. It rises and it rises and the proof is in the pudding. And the bread is good and needed and fed and good. I mean, couldn't you remember two makes two? Oregon Trail was great on Apple II. Box and you were right. You, I thought to ensue the truth. I appreciate that. You have died of dysentery, my friend. You're a painful and miserable death. But you deserved it for striking out unprepared across the country in a covered wagon. Add the yeast, but do not add the salt until the yeast begins to proof a lot. Then proof and proof the yeast begins to start. It proof. Add the salt to the dry mix flour, flour, some baking soda for an hour, then then let it rise, it rise, it's in it rise, it's in it ready to be needed and fries. We need to need the bread, the bread needs to be needed instead of ready. It proof instead of being heavy loop. The proof is in the pudding. Let's have some chocolate pudding. While the bread rises, rises, rises to the hood of the proof. Until the proof is in the roof. And the pudding's down below in the bread in the soul. And the only game I like on the apple too was Oregon Trail. How about you? Well, I like to play a few games on that console, which was really a PC. In case you don't know. Now the bread is risen, and it's morning time. The sun will also rise in the morning time. The proof, the proof will rise in the morning time. The oven baking, it rises and it shines. I said, I'm baking, baking in the bread in the morning. I'm shaking in that I'm going for it. I remember enjoying Oregon Trail now. That would be a very fun thing to stream. I agree, or come below. It would be cool to stream some old game that you get an emulator to ensue upon your PC. It's got to emulate the Apple 3 or 2, I guess I should say. It's had a 3 since 2 would do, but. <clears throat> I was at Apple II G at one point. I had Apple II E. E E F H I J K N H H H. My kitty cat is lying here beside me, and she's a Darwin's earliest GP. And by dawn's early light, we eat some bread. The proof it also rises. The proof, the proof it rises. The proof, the proof it rises. It rises, it rises to size. A competition in the wild with the elephants from around, stomping all the things that they see in their way that they're often. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. You should really give Psychonauts a try, Eric. I think you might really like it. An oil bear featured heavily inside of that show. You have to play a stream or so. Is it a game or a? Is it a game? Ooh, do, 
It's in the bread that we baked in our head. We looked there with the baked and said, and we were making hay for horse mumbler dread. Horse and ink in his shed full of cheese. Nick Watson, sons of puzzles, Nick Nico cheese. The proof, the proof, it also rises like the sun. And Hemingway, when he wrote that, had a whole lot of fun. He and Clay did things that didn't make a lot of sense, but he wrote well enough that he was famous for it, nevertheless. And yeah, okay. uh, I want to point something out. Not only does the sun stay up in the sky, not only does it set, and not only does it ask why, it also rises. It also rises. The sun not only sets and stays in the skies, it also rises. It also rises. The sun not only stays in the skies, the skies, the skies is. It's in the bread we bake, the post that we bake, and we are making it for horse mumble and shake and bake. Chicken and hang and cheese, kiwis are wicked. And make you watch and so the puzzles in the sickest. I've been baking, having home bacon, we're having eggs. Our freshly brewed bread and now it needs some butter ways. Some mayonnaise, some mantica, like to call the proof is in the bread. And that's not all, it also rises. The proof of rises. We're proofing bread and proofing everything inside us. We see the sizes for lots of prizes. And we would wonder if we want a potato with some chives. No, I don't want any charges on my tater. That is something perhaps I enjoy much later. But right now, I just want my potato by itself with a bit of cheese, sour cream, and also somehow pudding. Pudding, 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 pudding. Put the pudding on my potato. If you think you shouldn't, then you're wrong. The bread's been proofed. If you ain't sure, then you ain't a bitch loose. The bread is proof, and we've proven air proof. It's in the music that he's proof. The bread's risen, and look there is proof. It's extra bread and intuition is bacon. In the oven, it's bacon. A cob and a bacon. Has anybody ever played tomb beanies? It's basically tea I can't do for kids. I highly recommend it unless you want to kid. Since it's not for you, instead it's a game you shouldn't play if you're in a duck. It's T.I. Boys and for those above art. I mean, eight years old or not. Older than that little pose in your soul and your mind. Horse Bumbler, you should be aware before you give advice. Most people here are over the age of four or five. So if it's only for children, oh wait, you didn't say it was only for children. My mistake. Looks like I assume just because it was for children that it must only be for children. That's a specious reason. It's a building built on a weak foundation by going on vacation to a tornado nation. Look at the amazing bacon inside my head. The proof is in the bread. The reason, raisin, risen bread. And the proof of the amazing bacon bread that O Terry can eat it instead. The proof, the proof, and the sun also rises. The bread is proof. We've proven Eric's proof. Hot pan bacon. Bring home the bacon. We are having eggs with our freshly proof bread in our steak. And now we need some in A on our shake. Manticua, Manticua, proof is in the bread. Not legal in my state, Nikki, I had. I do apologize for indulging my immature, extroverted into a turf who really wants to be a knee into per. Son, like I don't know, Jerry Jerkson, where is an ENTP who can run for the ENT first event? I guess it'd be live. All right, that's enough of this. Yeah, I did. I was just, just rolling with my, with my bowling balls, as always. Do female ENTPs even exist? Yes, I. Somebody was telling me about another. Oh, wait, I wish his mom was telling me about it the other day. There's another lady, some lady on um, Piano and Piano. Mm. 
Mantequila. Mantequila butter. Mantequilla butter. Um, what's that dish in Mexican food that's like chicken fried steak? It's the equivalent of Mexican chicken fried steak except it's pounded flatter. What's that dish called? What is that dish called? Is it called the Delightful Dish of Delights? All right, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I appreciate everyone being here and indulging me in my indulgence, self-indulgence. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I will talk to you later. Good night.